What's up everyone, MK Tom Brady here. So, Rick the Hadou updated us on the standings of Combo Breaker 2024. We got the top eight leaderboard update. MK1 is in last place here amongst all these eight games. Now in this video, I am going to be fair to Mortal Kombat 1. I am not going to try to present the game or the state of the game in a way that it is actually not. I will leave that to the shills they do a great job of that all on their own. So like I said, I'm going to be fair to the game here. And while it is last on this top eight leaderboard, there are more than eight titles being held at Combo Breaker. So it is not last amongst all games being held. Now, true, these are the top eight main stage games, the main event games. And the other games are more si side titles. They're not really main event games, main stage games. MK1 is last amongst all those types of games. Like I said, it's not the, it's not last amongst all games held. More on this later on in the video. So I'm surprised to see the game here amongst the list of these titles. And I know people are going to say, Tom, cut the garbage. You are always talking about how people are not satisfied with the game, which is true. You know, so how can I be surprised? Well, the reason I'm so surprised is the tournament that this is. This is Combo Breaker in Chicago, Illinois. No, this is the home of Mortal Kombat. Normally, when a Mortal Kombat game is new within the first several months of its life, and it goes to the home of MK, Combo Breaker, this is when the game is at its peak, when the game truly shines. And this is normally the peak of Mortal Kombat, and it normally is never this big for the rest of the game's life. So to see it this far down at this particular event is what is so surprising to me, the event that it's at. I mean, normally, like I don't expect MK to compete with Street Fighter here. I mean, what game is going to possibly overtake Street Fighter? Oh, well, again, uh, while MK doesn't normally beat out a game like Street Fighter at an event like this, it's pretty comparable amongst the other games and really justifies its spot amongst the quote-unquote big three, the top three fighting game titles, which is considered to be Street Fighter, MK, and Tekken. And normally MK is over Tekken and we see how the times are changing and we all know the state of the Tekken 8 community right now and Tekken 8 more on this in a little bit as well. So I am a little surprised because it is a little, normally MK is higher than you see it here. Now, there are, like I said, I'm going to be fair, so there are a few things to look at here. Where it says notables, it says two games with 1,000 plus player record setting brackets. Obviously, those are the two highest games here. So, Tekken 8 and Street Fighter 6. But the next line says there are six brackets with already over 500 plus players. So, over 500, not quite six, but over five. Well, if I remove the top two games, Street Fighter and Tekken, the next six, MK's in that list. So Mortal Kombat has at least 500 players, which is really good considering the offline attendance for this game has been absolutely abysmal. So this is actually, it's a good showing considering where the state of MK1 right now and where it's been in its, its offline. I think its last offline tournament had 66 people at it as a pro stop. So this is good. It's the most it's ever had in the whole life of the game so far. So it's not like nobody is showing up. I'm, I'm not going to try to present that. However, there were a few things to take away here. This is not a pro stop for Street Fighter VI. Uh, at least I don't believe so. I, 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 in my research, I didn't see that it was. So this is not a Capcom tour, you know, corporate payout event. Players here have no chance to qualify for $1 million. And Street Fighter VI is older than MK1. And this is the home of Mortal Kombat. And yet it is Street Fighter VI has more entrance in this one tournament than Mortal Kombat 1's entire offline history. So if I take every major ever held for MK1, including this one so far, all the Pro Series events, all the majors for MK1, Street Fighter VI has more entrance in this one event than every single MK major, including its pro stops combined. Same with Tekken 8. So this, but Street Fighter 6 is obviously, people will say Tekken 8's newer. Uh, so we'll go to Street Fighter 6. And people don't have a chance to win a million dollars or compete for a million dollars in this tournament. You have no shot to qualify for that, yet they're still here. 
Uh, Mortal Kombat and Tekken 8 have guaranteed payouts as they're both pro stops. Guilty Gear has no corporate backing here. This is not a Guilty Gear pro stop. So for those who always try to make it about the money, the games above Mortal Kombat are not all corporate payout games, pro series games, yet those t communities have no problem showing up. So that's one thing to take away from this. More on the money here shortly. But look, we all need look at Tekken 8 and MK1. Now these are two games that are not dissimilar in how the communities are kind of setting those games on fire. We all know the Tekken 8 community is talking about the power is too much and the offense is too much and uh, you know the game is broken and needs to be balanced. And the MK community is talking about how watered down and boring the game is. So two communities both setting their game on fire for two different reasons. So I'm not going to say that Tekken 8 is not getting the same amount of complaining that MK1 is because it's getting quite a lot of complaints from its community. However, this is very telling here because while Tekken 8 has tons of power, people are going to complain no matter what, right? If a game has a lot of power in it, people are going to complain. And if a game has very little power in it, people are going to complain. Look, I'm in that camp. I complain all the time about games that have no power like MK1. Today, you're just never going to stop that. People are going to complain about it, whatever their preference is. But I think what Tekken 8 shows is while the community is kind of throwing fire at it right now, it shows that you have developers like NetherRealm who have really insulted the intelligence of their audience. They correlate being casual or not having a lot of time to play the game into being a stupid person. And this is why MK1 is so watered down. Now, two communities complaining, uh, this game has too much power, this game doesn't have enough power, but look at where Tekken 8 is. You see, it shows that you don't have to water or dumb a game down to really get people to buy it or show up for it. This directly disproves all that garbage that NRS has tried to sell all of you for years now. And... But the shills have tried to sell you this as well. But also, it shows that while people will always complain, there's nothing, this is proof, people will always complain no matter what you do to a game, they will always complain about it. Not enough power, they're going to complain. Too much power, they're going to complain. The difference is people will mass exodus a game that has no power while complaining about it, while they will continue to play and show up to play a game that has a lot of power in it while they complain about it. So both games will be complained about constantly, but one people will show up for the game with power, one people will not the game without power. And now on to the money. For those that have always tried to say the reason why MK is in its spot, like I believe MK should at this point lose its spot in the obligatory top three. Uh, because again, Tekken 8 has surpassed Street Fighter. It's supposedly the most broken mainstream fighting game out, and yet it goes over Street Fighter. MK1 is supposed to have the balance on lock, right? And yet it's the last game of all mainstream games. Now, there are some people who will try to say, well, no, it's not because people aren't happy with the game. It's because of the money. The money. Well, this is actually not true. Because on March 6th, NRS announced that the Pro Series is now $200,000. Not only did they announce it, they went ahead and made a trailer for it. So they didn't... Silently, silently in the middle of the night announce, oh, guess what? $200,000 on the line. No, no, no. There's a whole trailer for this so that everybody knows. We know people love trailers from NetherRealm. They love the trailers. They do great on you. We just heard MK does great on YouTube, right? All the shills. YouTube is where MK is at. They do great on YouTube. Okay, well, this was on YouTube. They announced it. So, I mean... People obviously know about it because MK does great on YouTube. People obviously saw this. So they showed, the, they tweeted about it, and then they made a video, two days of combat for Final Combat. They made sure that people knew that you were competing for $200,000 on the line here. So people know Pro Series is for big bucks now. They put all this out there. Then, on top of that, they announced that you can win a copy of the game, a free copy of the game. So same day they announce Pro Series 200K, put a trailer out. Then they say you can also win a free copy of the game. Compete in the Challenge Tower competition. They're trying to give the game away here. And 
Then they announced the following day that Mortal Kombat is going to be have a free-to-play weekend. Not only is it a free-to-play weekend, but it is 40% off during that time. Play it for free if you like it. Buy it for 40% off. Not only did they raise the pot bonus, they then tried to give the game away to try to boost everything. And still, and still, games like Street Fighter and Tekken have more entrance at one event than every Mortal Kombat offline major for MK1 combined. Now, there are some people there, again, that are going to still keep saying, you know, Tom, you're just you know hating on the game. But I'm only using the numbers here, right, for Combo Breaker. And I'm going to use these numbers. So these are the updated numbers, player count. MK on PS5 alone. I'm not, I'm not going to use Steam or Xbox because people are going to say, but the, the real people are on PS5. True underdog. Uh, September, uh, the game launched 1,654,778. After 30 days, it lost over 400,000 uh, players. It lost another 46,000 the month after that. Then the month after that, going on three, four months here, 392,000, almost another 400,000. Then in January, it lost 160,000. Now in February, it gained 102,000. In March, it lost 314,000 players in the month of March. This is Peacemaker. This is save, remember? Save the game. Save the game. Peacemaker saved the game. Okay. So, uh, now look. People may say the last 30 days, Tom. Look at this, 278,000. This is actually inaccurate because 30 days have not passed since the end of March. Actually, it's April 9th. So this is nine days in. It can't give a last 30 days accurate number. And the reason I know this is not accurate is if I look at the stats previously, after January, it says last 30, this was mid-February. So it gave a mid-February number of the game had gained 160,000 players, the same number it lost. Well, we know that's not true because in the month of February, 30 days following January, it didn't gain 160,000. But you know, February it only gained 102,000. So it literally added... 50% more players here than there actually was. So in reality, this number right here is inconclusive. For April, we'll have to come back to this number and see what it really is at the end of the month. But right now, it's clearly going by the trend, not accurate and probably significantly higher than the actual number would be if there's actually going to end up being a spike at all in the month of April which there might be because I think we have Ermac, so we'll have to see. So disregarding April because we're only nine days in, we cannot give conclusive 30-day numbers. As of March, so as of nine days ago, this game had lost 314,000 more players and had only an online player count of 118,000. These are the numbers. Now, if I... now. In the initial 30 days, if I take across all platforms, Steam, PS5, and Xbox, this game will have lost uh, almost 1 million players across all platforms in the first 30 days, and it's only gone down since. So these are not good numbers. Now, on to, like I said, I was going to be fair, this argument here. You're right. MK1 is 8th out of a, about 24... No, they're not main games. Games. Mostly these are side games. Mortal Kombat 1 is over games such as Dems Fighting Nerds, Vampire Saviors, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. Let's not forget the Mystery Game Tournament. It's over games like this. All right, so this really is an attempt to put MK in a place that it's not. What I take away from this video is that NRS has really insulted their audience. There is a direct correlation that some developers do, and they think there's a, there's a correlation between casual, they correlate casual or not having a lot of time to play into you are a stupid person, and NRS does this. This is why Mortal Kombat is where it is, and Tekken is where it is. You got Harada out here basically saying, gamers are soft. Gamers are soft these days.
More on that in another video. Meanwhile, MK1 is saying, is putting, you know, is, is putting powder on your butt and saying it's special in all different ways. You know, no. This shows that NRS has insulted their audience. They have correlated being casual or not having a lot of time to play into you are a stupid person. Hence, they must water their game down and dumb it down to a point where there's not much power because otherwise people won't buy it and they won't show up to play it. Whereas Tekken 8, Harada saying, you guys are all soft, weak sauce. You know, why don't you sack up, be a man and play? Stop being afraid to lose. And look where Tekken 8 is. A game, the game with the most power on this list, you know, right now is probably Tekken 8, maybe Guilty Gear as well, right? Tekken 8. Those games are higher than MK1. The game with the least amount of power is MK1. And where is it? At the bottom, in the gutter, in the sewer, in the trash, in the dumpster. All right, I was going a little far there. Uh, but over, <laughs> I was just joking. I had to give a little food for, for the shelves to say, look at that negative Tom Brady. But this really proves that, yes, people are going to complain. No matter what you do, they're going to complain. Power, they complain, but they play. No power, they complain, they do not play. Period, end of story. You don't have to remove power to get people to show up or to buy the game. Tekken 8 is disproving that. And will NRS ever change this? No. That's why MK1 is built off of MK11. And while the next game probably will be no different. But, of course, I always leave this to your opinion. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, but I do think this really is very telling and it shows while the Tekken 8 community is still firebombing the game, they're still showing up to play it. Whereas the MK community cannot equal Tekken's numbers in one... So MK community combined, MK1 combined, in its whole life, cannot equal the number of entrants in one Tekken tournament or one Street Fighter tournament. That should not be the case. But here we are. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for more content.